is a quality breather really that important? You probably work in an environment with machinery and lubricants or have some customers to do. Now, if you've ever wondered whether a quality breather can make a difference in the life of your lubricant or performance of your equipment, it can. Today, we'll be looking at the basics behind breathers. As you may have learned in school, when liquids or gases cool down, they contract, and as they heat up, they expand. That is why all fluid-containing reservoirs need airspace to allow the fluid to expand and contract. Additionally, during filling and emptying, air exchange occurs. Now, the breather vents are in place to allow air movement during heating or cooling and filling and emptying to ensure equal pressure with the external environment. Now, many of these vents are outfitted either with nothing or a paper filter, a shiny OEM cap, or a turndown pipe. Let's take a look at some of these. This is an, a, a basic OEM cap. It looks silver and shiny, but really it only keeps the bugs out. It filters down only to about 50 microns. This is a turndown pipe. Some people refer to it as a gooseneck or a candy cane. Uh, maybe moisture doesn't or water doesn't drip right down into the reservoir, but particulate and moisture can freely enter through that pipe. As you can see, it doesn't look too nice. These are two t-shirts laid over uh, the vent of a um, reservoir storage tote with the pipes coming into it. This really doesn't do anything for moisture or particulate. Maybe it's got some big stuff, but even lint from the t-shirts and small particulate, as well as moisture, can enter that reservoir. Here's some storage drums uh, of lubricant. The bungholes are open, so moisture and particulate, again, can freely enter and contaminate those thousands of dollars of lubricant. Another example here of lubricant um, stored outside, but the pipes are exposed with turn down pipes, um, so things can freely enter. Now, don't worry if you're doing this. We're going to show you what the better way is to protect your lubricant, which is why, if you ask, is a breather really that important? Yes. As you see in the previous pictures, those solutions may look like they're protecting lubricant, but they're really blocking only the large particles. Now, like I said, the smallest particles cause the most damage. So you might be wondering, well, what really is small? If you look at particle size in microns, a micron is just a unit of length equal to one millionth of a meter, which means it's really, really tiny. Now, the human eye can see about 40 microns clearly. And to put it in perspective, a human hair is about 50 microns. Now, the most harmful particles are clearance size, around 3 to 10 microns. That means you definitely can't see the particles that cause the most harm. These small particles can cause abrasive wear that lead to many, many other problems within your equipment and your lubricant. The other issue to consider, though, is moisture contamination. Moisture ingression can lead to hydrolysis, corrosion, and several other issues with machines and lubricants, once again. So by keeping out contaminants, you prevent problems. And prevention is about 10 times cheaper than removal. So just blocking the ingression of those harmful particles and moisture, you can save yourself a lot of time and money. And you can do that. You can keep those contaminants out by using a quality breather. Well, what exactly are those benefits? So let's take a look at a couple of the customer benefits. Of course, you're eliminating contamination through the breather, um, but you're preventing rust and corrosion. You're getting increased oil and filter life, uh, reduced abrasive wear, uh, a lot more reliable production from your equipment, and reduced machine downtime. All very valuable. So once people understand the value of a quality breather, they have trouble choosing between dust and a non dust and breather because they know it's good, but they don't know which one to choose. So what's the difference between a desiccant and a non-desiccant breather. Well, let's take a look. One contains a filter and desiccant, and desiccant is an adsorbent that traps moisture. The other one contains only a filter to block out particulate. Now, as you can see, when comparing a basic desiccant breather with a basic non-desiccant breather, both provide particulate filtration. Both have the ability to block some moisture and some oil mist. The desiccant breathers, uh, they feature many other optional uh, additions or features. However, the most important benefit of a desiccant breather is that it can pull moisture from within the reservoir, actively drying the fluid and environment inside your application. 
Well, what exactly does that mean? Let's take a look at a test uh, with a desiccant and a non-desiccant breather. The non-desiccant breather provided far less humidity protection. You can see that's the red line that goes right back up to, uh, to ambient humidity. The blue line, which is your desiccant breather, reduced relative humidity in the reservoir to 10% and continued to protect against incoming humidity for more than 30,000 cycles. That's five times longer than the non-desiccant breather. So ideally, to protect against particulate while offering moisture control, the use of a desiccant breather is highly recommended. Now, what, what are the different offerings out there? Let's take a look. Um, there are several different ones. There are standard uh, quality breathers range from standard units to those with check valves, bladders, enhanced features, disposable, and removable. So let's take a look at some of the common types and their uses. First, we're going to look at a standard breather. Now, standard breathers are essentially the base model. They're great for general use, and they're applicable to a wide variety of different applications. If you understand how a basic standard model breather works, you'll have little issues with understanding how the rest of them work. Now, the example on the right shows a breather with a stand pipe. This allows really for more stability against vibration and impact while ensuring even airflow throughout the unit. These standard breathers also allow for higher airflow because it's just your basic model. Now, incoming air enters at the bottom of the unit, passing through a foam pad and then through a three micron filter element to capture particulate. Next, the air is stripped of moisture as it passes through a bit of, bed of silica gel and then goes back through a secondary layer of filtration so that clean, dry air enters your reservoir right here. Uh, on the way back, it does the same thing. Exhaust air passes through the stand pipe, goes through filtration, gets stripped of moisture, and off to the outside. Now, maybe wondering what's the value of that. We're going to talk about that in a second. The stand pipe also allows for excess uh, oil mist or splashing to coalesce uh, and drip right back down into the reservoir. Now, during use, the desiccant will start to reach saturation. As it absorbs moisture, the indicating silica gel will turn from an active color to a replaced color. In this example, the breather will turn from blue to light pink when saturated. Now, the first few times a desiccant breather is used on an application, it may spend quickly, and that's really just because it's actively stripping moisture from inside of that reservoir that's already been contaminated with moisture. Um, so when the breather starts spending from top to the bottom, it indicates that it actually is pulling that moisture from inside the reservoir. Now, here is an example of a breather in a manufacturing environment. After a few units, the color saturation will move from the bottom to the top, as you see here, stripping incoming moisture as the inside reservoir is already dry. Now, the next option is uh, breathers with check valves. They basically work the same way as your standard units. They've got a standpipe, vent holes at the bottom, a bed of desiccant, and layers of filtration. The difference here is the check valves recessed inside the vent holes, and they offer um, also a lower airflow capacity. So as you see here, these are the recessed check valves. Now, why are these important? Well, for low flow applications like gearboxes, a unit with check valves has extended life. Uh, these check valves isolate the system from all levels of ambient humidity, and that really allows air only to enter when necessary. So when the system attempts to breathe in, pressure builds, and the check valves allow air to enter, and that seals off um, after the pressure is at equilibrium. The same is true for exhaust air. If there's a small pressure build, roughly 0.18 PSI for this unit, the check valves allow exhaust air to exit. It closes back up and the system is protected. So in this pictured example, the check valves are assessed inside the vent holes, allowing for added protection in wash down applications and direct streams of water. So as water is coming at this unit, it's not going into the check valves because it would have to enter at the bottom and go into these check valves here, which is relatively difficult. 
Now, a unit with check valves may have um, a higher price, but it will deliver much longer life than your standard unit. So these are really, really great for most low-flow applications. Next, let's take a look at units that incorporate check valves and a bladder. These units are ideal for low-flow applications that run in steady-state operations where there really are little to no minimal or little to no temperature fluctuations. So similar to the previous unit we discussed, when pressure builds, this unit allows air to enter, which inflates the headspace of the unit here, and then it seals off. So during minimal temperature fluctuations, the system um, then breathes only the air and the bladder of this unit here, which means there is no incoming air or exhaust air with ambient uh, conditions. Now, this unit will usually last very, very long if it is in the correct environment. Here's an example of a uh, check valve and bladder unit providing protection on a large gearbox that runs 24 hours a day. So since there's really no uh, fluctuation in temperature in this steady state operation, it does provide excellent protection. So you may be asking, the check valve units sound great, uh, but they really only seem to work for low flow applications like a gearbox. Now what if I'm in the market for uh, check valve protection with high airflow capacity? Well, that's where the heavy duty units come in. Usually specialized to endure a variety of different environments, these units offer check valves, but they accommodate high airflow capacity. Additionally, they provide added protection to high vibration, harsh environments, and even impact. So these are arguably the most versatile of any unit out there. These breathers block moisture. They can filter down to 0.3 micron. They handle rough chemicals and can take a beating, which really makes it an ideal solution for anything from hydraulics to gearboxes to storage, uh, mobile equipment, you name it. So as you can see here, here's an example of one of these heavy-duty breathers on mobile equipment. It's going to be rough, lots of vibration, impact, hydraulic fluid that can sometimes be pretty nasty, and it's going to stand up to that. So now that we've looked at a few of the disposable models, let's discuss some specialty units. So earlier we saw that non-desiccants are not really the best solution for applications where moisture is a concern. However, there are a few special circumstances in which moisture is not a concern. So applications like water glycol, where removing moisture would be harmful to the lubricant, using a non-desiccant breather is ideal. Additionally, arid environments with high dust or high amounts of oil mist, these units work great for them. Now the unit pictured on the right here features a pleated filter element that blocks particulate from the outside and allows oil mist to coalesce on the inside, thereby keeping out contaminants while keeping in the oil. Another specialty unit is uh, a rebuildable unit. In this case, we're going to take a look at a rebuildable steel unit. Now, these breathers are ideal for bulk storage. In addition to bulk storage, they're great for harsh chemicals and harsh environments as well. They're built with the heavy-duty materials like carbon steel or stainless steel, and oftentimes they can be customized with different types of desiccant, filters, or gasket, depending on the fluid being protected. Now, the unit pictured incorporates the same stand type we've seen in some of the other examples. Um, the incoming air enters through the bottom, travels through the, through the desiccant, and a filter element before entering the system, which means as it passes through, moisture gets stripped, particulate gets stripped, and it is clean air that's entering that reservoir. Now, as the desiccant becomes saturated, the sight glass on the front of the unit indicates when it is time to replace those components, and that is pictured right on the front there. Now, at the time of replacement, the rebuildable units need only have uh, the filter, desiccant bags, and the sight glass replaced. Now, these units are more expensive as the initial purchase includes that steel body, but subsequent rebuild kits are less costly. However, you have to keep in mind the long-term and short-term investment in these units are well worth it, if you're, especially if you're protecting thousands of gallons of valuable fluids like gasoline, ethanol, sulfuric acid, and more. And even if they're not that valuable in your head, 
think about having to completely replace them if there are minimal amounts of moisture or particulate in there to break them down and contaminate them. So whether it's a small gearbox or a 50,000 gallon tank, there really is a breather solution to help block out uh, harmful contaminants uh, for any application. Now the final question is, which one is right for you and, and how do you know which one is right for which application? Now, as you see here, a couple more rebuildable seals placed in the field. The questions you need to ask uh, to know which breather is best suited for your application, they're simple. First, you need to know what is the application. Do you have hydraulics, is the gearbox or pump, and storage? Uh, there are a variety of different applications. Next, it's important to know what is the environment. Is it a washdown environment? Is there low humidity? Is there high humidity? Do you have oil mist? Is it running continuously? Is it stop and go? Um, are there any type of chemicals in the environment? Maybe it is a food and beverage processing where you have uh, really harsh cleaning chemicals, high pressure, warm water uh, washing down those machines. Next is what is the airflow and the, the reservoir capacity? It's really important to know the airflow of that unit to ensure that you are placing the correct breather that can accommodate uh, the airflow of your unit. The reason being, if it cannot accommodate the airflow, you might have some uh, seals, um, you know, leak or any type of pressure build that could cause some major damage or even implosion. Um, and the reservoir capacity, of course, so we can ensure we have the right size of breather that you put on your equipment. So is it a high flow? Is it a low flow? Uh, is the flow coming from emptying and, emptying and filling? Do you have thermal expansion and contraction? Again, do you have a 50-gallon reservoir, or is it 50,000? Now, the final question is, what is the current breather or the current the uh, current cap? Now, is there nothing protecting it? Do you have a turndown pipe, non-desiccant breather, or desiccant breather? This, again, is important to know so you ensure you provide the best uh, breather solution for that application, and also to know what to expect. Like we said before, if you have nothing on that application right now and you place a desiccant breather, that desiccant breather is not going to last very long because it's actively going to be pulling moisture out of that reservoir until it's nice and dry. So, is a desiccant breather really necessary? Well, certainly. It will cost you 10 times less to keep it out than to remove it later. So, to reduce downtime and prolong root lubricant life and keep your systems running, you need to keep them clean, you need to keep them dry, and you need to choose the right solution by asking the right questions. So if you have more questions about how breathers work or what solutions are offered for your application, you can feel free to contact DeskCase at www.deskcase.com, that's D-E-S-C-A-S-E.com, or you can give us a call at 615-672-8800. Thank you.